Hello folks and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this, the Mark V VW Golf GTI. I've been wanting to have a go in one of these for quite some time, but it's been quite difficult because every single one that I find has been modified and it would be good to basically find one that hasn't been modified. And this is my favourite one of the lot. Quick brief history of the Golf GTI. Started out as the Mark I in the late 70s and that sort of transformed anything. I know everybody's got their own opinion on Golfs and some people say that it's not the car that defined the hot hatch, but in my opinion, it kind of did because it basically did everything that a sports car does, but with some practicality. It's the infamous line, it's all things to all men and women and they and them, everyone basically, cat and dog, whatever. But yeah, great car, two litre turbocharged four cylinder, 200 horsepower, Mark one Golf, great, Mark two Golf, fantastic, Mark three, mm, not so great, Mark four, horrible in my opinion. Then the Mark five was a return to form. And in my opinion, it's by far one of the best. And you can pick these up now for as little as two and a half thousand pounds, up to five thousand pounds, depending on what spec, three door, five door manual or DSG. But anyway, enough talking. Let's crack on and tell you what this car is like to drive. Here we are then in the Golf GTI Mark V. And the first thing you need to know is, is well, it's a Golf. This particular specified car has got the DSG gearbox. We'll talk about that later on. But one thing I must say is for a car that is well over 15 years old, I'm just amazed by how modern it still feels. I mean, inside, there's nothing really much showing its age, especially compared to say something like a Mark 7. All right, Mark 8 has a newer, fancier interior, but you know, this feels pretty solid to me. Um, first impressions, well, it's a Golf, which means that you sit nice and comfy, it's quite airy, it's quite roomy. This particular car is very nicely specified. It's got the leather seats. It's a five-door car. You've got two options of wheels. You can go for the painted color silver ones, I forgot the name of it, or you can go for these, which are the Monza wheels finished in diamond cut. Under the bonnet, we have a two liter turbocharged four cylinder, pushing out 200 horsepower. In manual gearbox specification, it will do 0 to 60 in just over seven seconds. If you specify or get one of these with a DSG gearbox, it will do it in less than seven seconds. And this DSG gearbox works a dual clutch system, which means that it just shifts through gears really well. It's just that little bit more frugal than the standard manual car. But to drive, it's just so normal. And I think that's what makes the Golf so special. It's not intimidating, and that's why it's that car for everyone. Anyone can drive this. You could put your nan in this, and it would feel normal. But it also feels timeless, and I quite like that. It feels like a timeless car. In the tuning world, you can get this two litre turbocharged engine to run three, 400 horsepower. Me personally, I would keep it a little bit stock, but OEM plus, maybe 250, maybe 300 with a limited slip differential. And like I said earlier, you could pick these up for two and a half thousand pounds, but beware because those ones do suffer with a bit of rust. They like to go on the boot, the arches, even on the bonnet as well. So you will be spending a little bit of money. And I have been told as well that the underneath can get a little bit rusty. You know where the jacking points are. If you're not too careful when you jack one up, it will plomp through there. In terms of running cost and maintenance, well, these are very frugal. These will do the best part of 40 miles per gallon. Servicing them isn't too expensive. Just make sure that you do the Campbell water pump service. Um, that is every four years or 70,000 miles. Some specialists will say do it earlier. Turbo actuators like to go. If you are getting a DSG gearbox specified car, make sure that you find one with plenty of history of it being serviced. VW like to say that it needs a service once in its lifetime, but that's not true because if these do go wrong, you're looking at a two and a half to three thousand pound bill. Ouch. Me personally, I would go for a three door manual and maybe in tornado red with the Monza wheels, but each to their own. This is the great thing about the Golf. If you want an automatic one, you can go for an automatic one. If you want to go for a manual one, you can go for a manual one. 
it just suits everyone to everyone's needs. And even though it's a bit sacrilege, if you're not a keen driver but want a powerful car, it's still all right to have one of these, to be fair, because it's still easy and refined to use. But let's drive this car a little bit faster and tell you what it's like once you give it some stick. So this two litre turbocharged four cylinder, it's got plenty of punch low down in the rev range, 200 horsepower. I know that doesn't sound much, especially you guys in Bradford who will tell me that this thing will run five, 600 brake horsepower, but it's just too much for the front wheels. I think it's quite a nice flexible linear torque curve. You can run this at, like I said earlier, three, 400 horsepower, and it wouldn't be too hard to get it to that. The soundtrack, it's quite, Farty, it's got a farty sort of soundtrack to it. VW sort of invented this DSG farts, which we're well known and well familiar with newer models. The ride stock is pretty good. This car has got lowering springs, which if I'm honest, upsets the ride a little bit. You might tell that in the video. But it's so effortless and easy to drive. And like I said, it's not intimidating. And some people like that, some people want that from a car. But also more importantly, the Mark V Golf showed that VW could make an engaging and keen driving sports car. I mean, once you start ragging it a little bit, you notice that it's up for a play. The front end's pretty decent. The steering's got really nice feedback. Obviously this era of car would be hydraulic and you can thread it down the B road. And if you turn into tighter corners, you do have options. Peel off the throttle and you notice that the rear end wants to rotate, get back on it. The front end's got a nice neutrality to it. Don't get me wrong, you're not gonna be getting massive lift off oversteer. It's not like a Focus ST in that department, but it does give you options. And if you wanna go down the tuning route, I think this will make a really good track car. A track car where you can literally drive there, decimate some, you know, under keen drivers in expensive supercars and drive all the way home and get 40 mpg i quite like that but yeah i just love mark 5 golfs i really like them i mean i would like a manual on this one but this dsg gearbox it's bone stock and it's so quick go up the gear fourth fifth sixth i spam it a couple of times i've got a fourth spam it again i get third you've just got options all the way through the red band it's great. It, this was ahead of its time without it not looking out of date. And I like that about the Golf. It's a pleasant driving experience. Now there's gonna be a point in the video where you're watching this right now and thinking, I want a VW Golf Mark V GTI. And I don't blame you because it is a lot of car for the money, which is where I bring you on to Car Vertical, which is sponsoring today's video. Now Car Vertical is the ultimate platform for when searching or buying or selling your next used car. You can check for mileage miscorrections, whether it's been a category damage, you can check whether it's been clocked, stolen, or has outstanding finance. It's quick and easy to use. All you've got to do is just go on a website Website, put in a registration and it will tell you literally everything and if you want to do that click on the links in the description down below and use the discount code SID for 10% off. The Mark 5 GTI works for the family person especially if you get a five door and if you are that family man that's busy with the kids and you've got a nine to five job on a summer's evening you want to go out for a b-row drive well you could come out here and do what i'm doing enjoy myself it's so pleasant and it's still quick and i keep going on about this but i'm still struggling to get my head around these numbers since when was 150 mile an hour slow and 0 to 60 in under seven seconds slow it goes really, really well, and it looks cool. This one, finished in a five-door, looks very, very discreet. Like I said, there are loads out there that have been chaffed up, you know, wind deflectors and 4D number plates gelled. 
but this has been tastefully done and it's nice to drive a stock one again and the fact that you can pick these up for two and a half to three and a bit thousand pounds so as long as you find one with decent history you should be okay so yes steering good engine good not the most charismatic one in the world but it's effective chassis really good just so neutral and it's got a good sense of connection and taking it down my favorite b-row drives you can just sense that it's up for a play you know just pile it into a corner doesn't torque steer hardly understeers i mean the mark IV golf oh god that was it was a solid car but as a gti uh, Mark III wasn't that great. I mean, it wasn't as bad as the Mark IV, but they both looked pretty hideous. Mark II's awesome, but they've now become a proper icon of a classic, and they are getting on a bit. This is still the car to buy. The Mark VI, I did do a video on that one. Check that somewhere up there. I did do a video on one of them. And yeah, that was pretty pleasant, but for me, it's still the Mark V. I just love the Mark driver and the way this thing drives. So yeah, if you're in the market for a Golf GTI and you've got about three and a half to four thousand pounds to spend and you want something that can literally do everything, I want to mean everything, IKEA emergencies, carry people, long road trips, inexpensive to run, inexpensive to insure, do track days. It's this, isn't it? There are more engaging hot hatches, there are more charismatic ones, Renault Sport, Ford. But this is the perfect all-rounder. And in 2023, it still feels modern. So yeah, this is my highlight of the car. The Mark V Golf GTI, if you've got the spare cash, go and get yourself one of these because you will not be disappointed and that's it for today's video thank you very much for watching if you've liked this hit the like button and let me know what is your favorite hot hatch am i wrong about the mark 5 golf gti i know i'm not wrong i will argue with you guys in the comments but yeah if you love stuff like this hit the like hit the subscribe button big shout out to the owner i'm going to leave his links in the description down below and if you're an owner out there and you want to chuck me the keys to some of your toys then um DM me on Instagram at sid.north or um, reach out to me in the comments. Anyway, until next time, folks, see you later.